The royal family seems untouchable. That's why when the elites get injured, they tend to make headlines, even if their boo-boo requires no more than a band-aid. In 1991, Queen Elizabeth II was bitten whilst breaking up a dogfight between her Pembroke Welsh corgis. According to My London, the pesky pup-produced wound was so bad that it required three stitches. While corgis are generally well-mannered dogs, they do have a feisty streak that can sometimes cause strife between pack members. In a 2022 interview, the Queen's former corgi trainer, Roger Mugford, told Country Living magazine, When I visited her, she had nine dogs, and they were incredibly well-controlled, well-managed and obedient. And of course, the question is, why did she need me to come in? It's because there were occasional fights between members of her pack. All dog fights are really scary. It's the surefire way to be bitten, separating dogs having a good fight. The bite didn't seem to sway Queen Elizabeth's love for Pembroke Welsh corgis, because she continued to raise and breed them for many years afterward. The 96-year-old monarch grew up with the stubby dogs, owning more than 30. Their only drama during her reign? Nipping people at the palace. Of all the gardening enthusiasts in the world, King Charles III might be the last you'd expect to become a casualty of the hobby. But that's exactly what went down in 2001 when the monarch was hurt while cutting a tree at his home. According to Hello magazine, the injury was caused by a cloud of sawdust that landed in the then prince's eye. Charles's gardening misadventure became big news when he was seen wearing an eye patch in public. It's no secret that the royal family has scores of staff members, including gardeners and landscapers, that maintain the palace grounds. However, Charles is one royal who really seems to enjoy getting his hands dirty. In fact, the king is a masterful gardener, and he has earned a lot of recognition for his skills. Two of Charles's show gardens, the Carpet Garden and the Healing Garden, scored silver medals in England's prestigious Chelsea Flower Show, per the Financial Times. Actress Sophie Winkleman is best known for her performances in Two and a Half Men and Peep Show. Well, I've got some news too. Me and Johnson are over. He's looking for someone more subservient on the internet. However, the entertainer has another claim to fame. She is a royal by marriage. According to The Guardian, Winkleman, whose official title is Lady Frederick Windsor, joined the esteemed family in 2009 when she wed Lord Freddie Windsor, the son of Queen Elizabeth II's cousin. In times of struggle, it definitely pays to have a squad like the royal family. That's exactly what Winkleman discovered in 2017, when she was involved in an horrific car accident. The collision left Winkleman with a broken foot, a ruptured abdomen and two broken bones in her back per town and country. Unable to take care of the household, Sophie Winkleman told Hello Magazine that her royal relatives stepped in to help her family bounce back. The actress stated, Prince Charles sensed correctly that everything would be chaos at home, so he asked his cook, instead of taking care of him, to take care of us. So our lunches and dinners were cooked at Clarence House, then delivered for weeks on end while I was in hospital, and then still disabled at home. The actress also shared that she received visits and flowers from other members of her extended royal family. Equestrianism and the royal family go together like the Queen and her crown jewels. So when Queen Elizabeth II's granddaughter, Zara Tyndall, rose to fame as an accomplished rider, it probably didn't come as a shock to her horse-loving family. Today, Zara is a decorated competitor with numerous national and international wins under her belt, per her website. In 2012, the rider even scored a silver medal in an Olympic team event. But with so many successes, it's a given that Zara has experienced some extreme low points in her career. The royal, who does not carry an official title, has seen numerous falls and injuries during her time on the course. Zara's worst accident occurred during a 2008 competition, when the rider broke her collarbone in an accident that tragically caused the death of her horse, Tsunami II. In a jump gone wrong, Tsunami II missed the landing, causing the horse and rider to topple headfirst to the ground. Both were taken away for treatment, but Zara's horse was not able to be saved via the Daily Mail. Though understandably devastated by the accident, Zara Tyndall has continued to gallop forward in her riding career. Um, we'll just see what we can do. Well, we look forward to watching it. Just like his wife Zara, former rugby player Mike Tyndall is no stranger to sports injuries. For players of the physically demanding game, most rugby injuries can be taken in stride. However, that all changed for Mike Tyndall in 2008, when the athlete was severely wounded on the field. 
In a very misfortunate tackle, Tyndall suffered a punctured lung and a one-inch gash in his liver. The six-foot-two-inch sportsman was immediately hauled away to intensive care, per Wales Online. Fortunately, his injuries were treatable, and the Tyndall family was able to avoid a serious tragedy. Mike Tyndall opened up to the Daily Mail about the grisly injury, stating, at first, I thought I'd just done my ribs, albeit badly. My immediate thought was that at least a couple had been broken. But what really worried me was the fact that I was struggling desperately to breathe. That's why I lay still for so long on the ground. It wasn't so much the pain, more the fact that I couldn't seem to get much oxygen into my system. Mike Tyndall retired from his rugby career in 2014, per The Guardian, and while the athlete had an extraordinary run on the rugby field, he also racked up an eye-popping amount of injuries, including torn ligaments, broken bones, and at least eight nose breaks. On several occasions, the new Princess of Wales has been spotted with adhesive bandages on her fingers. While barely noticeable to most, Princess Catherine's finger dressings are a hot topic amongst curious fans. <laughs> to be honest, I wouldn't read over, I wouldn't believe everything you read in the paper. But uh... in fact, the bandages have sparked so many questions and theories that Buckingham Palace was actually compelled to address them. Sort of. Of the mysterious finger adornments, a spokesperson said that the royals had no comment. Per Wales Online. Although Catherine has never publicly revealed the causes of her wounds, there is likely a simple explanation. For one thing, the princess seems to be an accomplished cook. The mother of three enjoys making a variety of dishes, but according to Hello Magazine, her greatest hits include roast chicken, nutritious smoothies, and her grandmother's chutney. And as all cooking enthusiasts know, cuts and nicks are par for the course when you spend a lot of time in the kitchen. Not to mention, the princess enjoys a score of other hands-on hobbies, including gardening and lambing, per bustle. With such an exciting lifestyle, Catherine probably isn't too concerned if her finger bandages throw off her royal image just a bit. But that doesn't stop the public from buzzing about the princess's distressed phalanges. In fact, Kate's infamous bandages even have their own Instagram account. From coronations to garden parties, life at Buckingham Palace is steeped in all sorts of royal traditions. But of all the royal family rituals, equestrianism seems to top the list. So it's no surprise that the noble family has suffered a ton of riding injuries throughout the years. That's exactly what happened to Queen Elizabeth II in 1994, when a tumble off her horse resulted in a broken wrist. According to The Independent, the ironclad monarch dusted herself off and immediately climbed back onto her horse. In fact, Her Majesty was so unbothered by the injury that she waited a full 24 hours before having it examined. What the Queen had brushed off as a nagging bruise actually turned out to be a fractured wrist. At the time, a spokesperson for Buckingham Palace addressed the injury, announcing that it was, quote, an inconvenient thing. Although her health had started to deteriorate by the summer of 2022, the Queen's passion for horses was unwavering. Queen Elizabeth continued to ride horses until shortly before her death, at the age of 96, per the sun. For most of his long life, Prince Philip was a fervent athlete with a passion for hockey, sailing and cricket, per the royal family's website. However, it seems that nothing could compare to the monarch's love of polo. For His Royal Highness, polo was a source of pride and achievement, but it was also a source of injuries that would affect the course of his life. The 1960s were a bustling decade in Prince Philip's shining polo career, as the nobleman won several tournaments, but they didn't come without their royal boo-boos. I have a boo-boo boo-boo on my soul. Those years also brought on a string of injuries, including a broken ankle, a nasty laceration, and a pulled ligament. Unfortunately, some of his polo injuries gave way to arthritis. The agonizing joint condition is what ultimately led Prince Philip to retire from polo in 1971. In February 2015, Prince Philip raised concerns when he stepped out with a noticeably bruised eye. It was the latest of several black eyes that the prince had donned around the time. Even more alarming, according to the Daily Mail, His Royal Highness wore butterfly stitches on his ear, another sign of a harrowing injury. Representatives of Buckingham Palace remained relatively tight-lipped about Prince Philip's shiner, but many assumed it was caused by a fall.